All right, welcome back, everybody, to the Crossfade Gaming Cherry Tournament. This is the first edition, and we are coming at you with grand finals right now between University of Texas Rio Grande Valley Ocelotls and IP Quetzalcoatl. Um, hoping for a really good match here. Uh, these are obviously two very good teams in this tournament. Um, made it all the way so, f so far. Um, we should be getting a look at the rosters on both sides. We have uh, for IP Quetzalcoatl, we have Shantae and Gabe on DPS. James Baxter on tank, Phoenix and Pleb on support. And the charity they are supporting or have been supporting throughout this tournament is the uh, Cruiser Sports, which is their mission is to enhance the quality of life for individuals with physical disabilities through sport and recreational activities. They boast well over 125 members. The organization is 100% volunteer driven and is one of the most recognizable brands in adapted sports community. All funds uh, raised are put towards programs offered and the expensive specialized equipment needed for persons with disabilities to participate in various sports. Uh, if you want to find out more about cruisers, uh, cruiser sports, you can head to cruisersports.com. And Giz, do you want to take us away for uh, University of Texas Rio Grande Valley's roster? Sure thing. On the DPS lineup, we have uh, SUT at Sutafu. I'm going to botch these names. Uh, Jick, Trace on the tank, and Descended and Pato on the support line. The charity that they have been rocking all tournament long is the Project to End Suicide Among the LGBTQ Young People. One accepting adult decreases the risk of suicide by 40% for LGBTQ uh, young people. We provide LGBTQ youth with 24-7 crisis counseling via phone, text, and chat. Your money has a direct impact on our ability to provide life-saving counseling services to LGBTQ young people. To find out more, head over to thetrevorproject.org. Ooh, these were mouthfuls. <laughs> All right. And yeah, so well, we are going to we are maybe hopping into Antarctic Peninsula here as our first map. Um, this should be pretty exciting. Obviously, new map, uh, new map having heading into Overwatch Two Season Three. Um, been in for a, a little bit now, so meta is somewhat solidified on on this map. Uh, what do you think we're gonna see in this first map? Guess? Well, it really depends on what these teams are comfortable with. Uh, from what we've been able to see, you know, with the Overwatch League and you know, just watching other tournaments that are currently going on. It seems like a lot of Brawl is very uh, useful. You can run the May here with the Reinhardt, with the Lucio, maybe a little bit of a Kiri, depending on what your support filling. But also, Ball is actually a really great pick for these maps. There's a lot of room for him to uh, roll out and, you know, basically take the distraction and get in the damage in. But yeah, I think mostly probably Reinhardt, maybe some Ramatra or Arissa too. So it's really mm. just going to come down to the tank's comfort pick and the DPS are just... Oh, well, you know, they've got to play with a couple of hit scans, probably Cassidy, maybe a little Souljorn, Ash. Of course. And if um, if anybody out there has been following the Pro-Am, obviously, we saw with uh, one of the contenders teams in their trick room uh, running that Bastion pick with the Rhine Brawl um, on a few of the points here on Antarctic, which got some varying success. Um, obviously, they I think they lost that map against the Shock, but they did end up winning the series overall. So there, there is a lot of flexibility that can happen on this map within each comp archetype. Within the Brawl, you can take Ramatra, Rhine, DPS, really open, as you said. That Bastion pick, really surprising to come out uh, in the Pro-Am, but we'll see what we got here. It looks like we are going to see the ball comp um, from University of Texas, uh, Rio Grande Valley. So this this could be a really interesting matchup. Diva on the other side for Quetzalcoatl. That is quite surprising to me. Let's just see how they set up this fight here with the uh, Kiri Mercy. And the first gauge it starts with both teams just taking a little poke damage, slowly going, while Kiri for Pleb is trying to find some little headshot picks. And now it looks like they're going to start to force towards point, and the hat comes off on the ball. Will they be able to take down? Yes. There goes Trace, easily take down. What a great hat coming out from Gabe. And right now it's just playing cleanup on this high ground. 
maybe trying to force the point here from Quetzalcoatl, and they will be winning this fight with all these hacks coming in, being able to get all the advantage. But no, Jack is able to back out just enough. But once again, Quetzalcoatl did have the advantage taking out that ball early, so they will be able to grab the point. And now it's just going to be a standalone trying to uh, cover this high ground. Pleb finding that headshot like I mentioned earlier, and James just also following up on the finish onto the soldier. With that, it looks like uh, Ocelots are going to have to back out here, or they're going to stagger too much. Yeah, I I like the the Winston swap right away out um, from from uh, Trace here. I think the ball is especially with the DPS they were running, um, no real flanker DPS to kind of help support that ball and make distract a little bit of attention. It looks like they're going to make further swaps here. Yeah, the Rhine comes out with Zen Mercy support line. It's not going to be a lot of healing for that Reinhardt, especially when you're facing down the hack damage boost, uh, that double damage from the hack, plus the damage boosted Ash is going to get a lot of value on their rotations. So I I don't know. I don't, I don't see the vision with the comp they've got right now. Here we are. Change up's coming out, but the EMP and the rush comes out. It's an immediate team wipe. Looks like Ocelot just had the prepared, and now we're coming into two fight territory for the first point. See, the, the first set of swaps was was good, I felt, but making those further swaps around, you're not really gonna get a fight with a lot of ultimates here um, for for the other side. Like, you you look at the ultimates. Uh, that's here, you have Baxter with that Diva Bomb, that Bob is coming in, the Valk's coming in, and on the other side, you just have High Noon right now, everything else is like halfway. You, you are not going to get a fight with a lot of these ultimates here. So, no. that Bob comes out, that's... Ooh. The pin able to get the Bob away, but Shanti doesn't need old Rust Bucket to finish off the picks on both the May and the Mercy. It's just that damage boost is doing too much. And with that, it looks like the first objective here on Antarctica is going to go to Quetzalcoatl. Yeah, this damage boosted Ash putting in a lot of work here. Uh, they're holding various angles with that Ash, that Sombra putting pressure from behind with the hacks worked out really well on that map and we're seeing we're seeing some swaps here both sides we've got rissa comps we've got romatra sojourn swap sojourn interesting pick some say not good without that mercy others say is very good we're seeing complete swaps so hopefully we get a different uh completely different look uh, on this point here I think the real question is, what is the Torp going to be able to do here on this point? I mean, I, I have some ideas, you know, that the, the small high ground on the left side might be a good spot for that turret. The angled plane help uh, obscure where that turret is a little bit. And it looks like they are going to be, uh, UT is going to be taking this left side for going the uh, arguably better high ground of the right side. And they dropped a point immediately, looking to get control, leaving this Arissa out, kind of to spell, spell the point out. The wall does come out, blocking uh, the Arissa from the rest of the team, but the ability is just being used left and right. The turret can't stay up because uh, Quetzalcoatl is focusing. And here comes another wall. Is it going to be enough? No, luckily the Javelin spin is just enough with the Fortify to keep up the Arissa, but Phoenix able to find the Cassidy in the background thanks to that little bit quick charge from the Railgun. And it looks like already Quetzalcoatl is going to be taking this map. So the uh, thing that I'm noticing, uh, the thing that I'm noticing here with uh, UT Rio Grande's comp here is they're running, they're running this, uh, they're running this Arissa, right? And Arissa is known as a tank that wants to lock down a specific part of the map and just deny access you can't really do that if you don't have a pretty high healing support line and that mercy kiriko the healing output can be very high but it's a heal over time so if they burst down this orissa really fast it's going to be a problem and the window comes out shanti able to find cassidy once again but gets traded by the switch onto the reaper from uh satafu but it, right now, it looks like Quetzalcoatl is going to have to be forced to use a couple more orcs. The rush comes out for the Ocelots, able to rush down everybody, forcing both the Baptiste Immortality and the Bell. And it looks like they might be able to find a turn around, but no, they just can't find the picks right now. The Immortality comes out. Here comes the Blizzard from Gabe. Shanti finding a pick again, but Jack trading for the Baptiste. But 
once again, also or Quetzalcoatl is just able to find a little few more picks coming out of this fight with only having to waste one ult. I think I think that's a really good, uh, like really good economy fight uh, here for Quetzalcoatl. I mean, you still have these rails. And granted, you use both supports. You're already 50 to Kitsune already. You're gonna get that before the round ends. And you're looking on on the side of Rio Grande Valley, and it's just that Reaper ult. You're not gonna get a Ramatra ult. You're not gonna get a Visor. You might get a Valk again. Probably not gonna get a Kitsune if it goes into overtime. So, uh, Lots of Kloda has a real advantage coming to this fight here. Yeah, both DPS trying to take out Shantae on the flank here, but not able to thanks to that rocket jump. With that, it finally looks like we're coming down to the final fight, ladies and gentlemen. The overclock comes out from the soldiers, not able to find any shots collected, but our game able to get the Reaper from behind as soon as the race was up. And just like that, it looks like this fight is going to the favor of Quetzalcoatl, but it looks like the trade might be able to come out. Yes! Trace is able to find out with that fist just last second, but it will be taken out. And once again, the fight is going in favor of Quetzalcoatl. With that, it looks like Antarctica will be in favor. Oh, they were just able to flip the map around, but they lost it as soon as they gained it. Quetzalcoatl is taking Antarctica here on the first ever finals for KG. That's a, that's a clean, clean 2-0 for Quetzalcoatl. Really good play uh, from Shantae and Gabe, kind of taking off angles from each other and forcing the attention from uh, from Rio Grande Valley to be split in two different directions. When they're trying to play this grouped up style and you have approaches coming from different directions on you, it's hard to focus on where you want to move and where you're trying to hold positions on the map because of all the different directions that... Uh, a attack is coming at you so really good job here from Quetzalcoatl I'm excited to see what they're going to pull out into the future maps here I want to see some more solid solidity in the comps that uh Rio Grande Valley pulls out here it feels like some of the comps are running don't have quite the cohesion and synergy in the hero picks that is going to be required to really uh put a serious challenge to what Quetzalcoatl uh, has in the strategy department here. Yeah, agreed. I mean, I think partially Oslas, at least on the second objective, were trying to counterpick for the team that they were, uh, you know, the comp they were just going up beforehand. I think that's why we saw the Torb maybe to be a little extra damage to, like, spy check for the Sombra when she comes to try to hack and stuff. But unfortunately, they just didn't know that Quetzalcoatl was going to make a complete change on them. Um, yeah. and, that, and that I think that just comes down to experience. You know, typically speaking, especially when it comes to, you know, these King of the Hill maps uh, on control, you just don't play the same composition every single point unless it's like, I don't know, Nepal where Brawl is just uber strong. So we are going into Circuit Royale, uh, your favorite map, of course, <laughs> for our second map of the night <laughs> and our first uh, push map. What do you think we'll see here? Yeah, uh, obviously Circuit very leaning towards snipers you got those long sight lines on various parts of the map third point a little bit of an exception you can run snipers uh brawl is pretty good there too it's not great everywhere else so i i if we're running standard stuff i would we'd probably be seeing the sig here maybe ramatra stuff like that winston possibly but judging on first map i'm not positive that's what we're gonna get the other the other match that i casted in this tournament here we we saw Doomfist comps from both sides on Circuit Royale. So I am not holding hope to seeing anything in particular here. We we really could see anything. Um, I think James Baxter on that Ramatra was pretty clean. I think that could be something that works really well for them if they keep that. Um, but in general, probably Hanzo Widow, I would say. Yeah, Hanzo Widow, maybe an Ash um, instead of a Hanzo sometimes. I mean, they're, they're, this once again, this map is pretty, you know, it's wide open for the long range characters such as, you know, Widow, Hanzo, Ash, Soldier, and Soldier. Or, uh, Cassidy can be kind of valuable on the first point here. The Flyers are not so great. And, you know, some people like to. Yeah, okay, Storm. Stop with the shaking. 
But anyways, you can uh, you can might be able to even see like a flank rat. You know, sometimes teams like to have a junk rat specialist who likes to fly over the top and catch the enemy off guard. Now we do see that widow and soul Jordan coming out from the side of Quetzalcoatl, which is I think is very strong on the defense, considering you have the ability to really charge up that railgun while so giving give pressure, so your uh, widow can get the uh, angles they need on the sight lines. And what's going to be interesting uh, matchup wise here is we're seeing the Baptiste uh, out of IP uh, Quetzalcoatl here, which is different from what uh, Rio Grande Valley is running that Kiriko. So we're going to have a difference in healing amounts here. Obviously, uh, Quetzalcoatl is going to be pushing out more heals with that Baptiste. Um, but we got swap. We got brawl here. This is going to be very interesting. See if they can route fast enough to get on some of these targets that are holding close. Like that Sigma on the low ground could be a good target. Zen chilling kind of in the mid ground could be a good target as well. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. Right now it's an early push coming out, but unfortunately Trace does get ticked off trying to force more room space than he had available with his health pull considering Gabe is hitting headshots left and right on the Widowmaker. It looks like this is going to be getting dragged to the bridge, and that's probably about it coming out from the side of Ocelots just because they lost their tank. And with that, Gabe finding another headshot onto a patio deck. And Shante cleaning up the rest of the team here. Gabe just popping off on this Widow early. It's uh, looking pretty good for the Widowmaker. And the Ryan gets out. So they, they pushed low ground uh, with that. And... Granted, some of the DPS were playing low ground, some of the sports were playing low ground, but they didn't clear that Widow off height, I believe. So that's where a lot of the problems came in that fight. The wall goes up, good rotation here. They're making that height. This is going to be really key for them to deny the high ground here. Yeah. Using that May wall to act like a double shield for this brawl composition so they can get closer enough so that way Gabe cannot get advantage on the Widowmaker. And right now they're finally able to push it to this corner, but Lucio does almost get picked off once again by Widow and the, the accretion comes flying through but misses. And a huge wall coming out, forcing the immortality. Gabe able to find one, forcing the May into the ice block, finding two and wait for it, three! Gabe popping off on this Widowmaker right now, folks. They need to find a different answer and solution to dealing with Gabe here, otherwise they're getting too much pressure while Gabe finds a little trickle pick on to Trace. So, they, so Quetzalcoatl recognizes that they're trying to take this high ground uh, with the brawl, and they, they just drop back, Widow pops up to the stairs on the back side of that corner, and they just wait for the push to come in. They're, they're, they're pushing through another lane of open space, they don't adequately uh, deny the sight lines uh, from the Widow or the Sojourn, and they end up getting picked off. We're seeing Nanovisor here. Is this a good investment here, Giz? Nanovisor is not able to find anything because of the corner of the wall and natural cover, and the Widow also comes out. Gabe able to find one while Pleb is able to take down the Reinhardt. It looks like that Nanovisor was wasted to the advantage of a window, of a proper window. You know, honestly, that Nanovisor would have got a little more value if they waited until they got around the corner and there wasn't so much natural cover to hide behind. Yeah, so um, UT Rio Grande Valley opts to switch that Lucio out for a Zen. Uh, maybe feeling they're not getting enough value out of the speed boost, but how are you going to route through this map now without the speed boost? You're crossing a lot of open spaces, and that Widow has sights now. This is going to be very difficult for this Brawl comp if they want to take this uh, first point here. And Gabe already finding an early pick onto JCK. This is not what you need when you're on the side of the Ocelots. And the Shatter getting blocked. Oh my goodness. Right now, it's just looking so strong. Pleb was able to finally get uh, knocked off the high ground. But Shantae just cleaning up. And it looks like once again, Oce or, um, Ocelots are going to be looking for that last fight potential here on Circuit Royale. Will they be at like, the point? Uh, not looking good, considering how many ults they've already invested. And we do see a switch over to the ball, but Gabe just clicking heads, making stagger after stagger. Ball Mercy, oh no, we, we do have the May ult still on the table. 12 seconds left. It it, it could be doable if Quetzalcoatl groups up enough and that Blizzard hits all five. But to be honest, I'm not seeing it with the way Gabe's playing right now. 
Not to mention, you do have Flev still has Trance ready for it. But Gabe does find the Mercy, but gets taken out finally by Trace, able to switch over to that ball. What a great choice, finally. And while that, here comes the Window and the Railgun combo here. Nano trying to keep the ball alive, so that way the Soldier can't find any picks, but still finds the Ana in the background. It's just going to be too much here. And the Flux finally comes out for defiling Stragglers, but it won't be enough. Quetzalcoatl is able to hold off first point. So easy, easy time for Quetzalcoatl. And we got, a, you know, a nice little Sith Lord going on here with the orange and red for our uh, versus backgrounds. I love it. I love it. Yeah, we really what we saw was a really great positional game here um, from Quetzalcoatl. Kiting into the they're kiting the push from uh, from Rio Grande Valley, kind of giving the space initially and then saying, OK, you took that space. Now you're sitting in an area where you have to push into another set of high grounds. And OK, can you do it again? No, Gabe shuts you down on the Widow. No, Shantae shuts you down on the Sojourn. They didn't have the the ability to really challenge those two long-range DPS in the back. And so maybe maybe a full sail comp switch would have been better there, swapping to the ball earlier. Obviously it does get the pick late in that uh in that overtime fight. But it's it's really uh frightening here for Rear Grand Valley, it, it, the, the sweep energy is, is starting to build up here. Yeah, I mean, honestly though, if I was to uh, also ask the things, I would have acknowledged the fact that Gabe was popping off on the Widowmaker, so what can we do to change it up, maybe switch over to... I mean, they tried it with the Maywall, trying to give it like a double shield fill, but honestly, going to a dive would have been probably better, and here we go. Shate looking for an easy sneak flank with the Genji on the brand new uh, Inferno skin. And Gabe is back on that Sombra, which we saw was doing so much on Antarctica's first point. Looking for a nice early pick, picking out a target, asking his teammates, who is he going to dive on? And it looks like he finally found the target, and it's going to be Mercy. And here he goes. Here comes the hack, and the dash is able to find somebody. No, he's able to survive just barely, thanks to the Suzu. But, I mean, look at that. The cart's almost already at the bridge. And, and they were able ended to up find that pick. Yeah. And there we go. Huge hack coming on to the Sigma, able to find out. Gabe just being too much of a pest with these hacks, man. You're able to find so many follow-ups. Oh, Shante finally gets taken down by a nice shot coming out from his brother and counterpart on Saku. Yeah, I mean, that... it's, it's not going to be enough because they're not going to be able to touch. It looks like it's just an easy win but coming out here from the Quetzalcoatl. I mean, they're trying to survive staggering. Oh, look at that. The Winston Polygates and now this Hanzo is actually paying off. And with that, this fight is going to have to be a loss fight for Quetzalcoatl. So I, I, I like the, the timing on the dive, you know, with the hack. Really good timing. Forces out a lot of cooldowns. And then Shantae comes a little bit later into that dive and is able to clean up the pick on the Mercy. They got really good card push here, and and look what we're building to here. Nanoblade, almost at Kitsu as well. This is going to be very difficult for Rio Grande Valley to defend here. And a big Suzu come out for Quetzalcoatl, keep him alive, and the rush comes out too. It's able to split out the team and take out the Ana, but Shantae is able to find two himself. And now with James just jumping on this Winston, it looks like this might be the it for uh, map two as Shantae is just rolling around with this blade, just doing enough damage here to get the ball out of the picture. And with that, Quetzalcoatl will be taking Circuit Royale. That is a quick two maps for Quetzalcoatl. I mean, there is some some attempts, some good team fights uh, for Rio Grande Valley. Uh, we saw that, that two fights on defense, I think, uh, on the hold here. But the DPS for uh, Quetzalcoatl looking really strong. Obviously, Gabe with his play of the game here. Big, big nano onto him. Um, it, I want to see maybe a little bit of uh, more standard picks on the support line. I feel like the uh, Cheery Mercy is not enough burst healing, really, to, to support... Uh, to support a dive, um, as, as we saw with the ball at the end, with the brawl, um, I, I feel like that might be one of the parts that's letting down Rio Grande Valley right now. Um, but 
I am I'm not positive. It, it it this could just be sheer domination from Quetzalcoatl. Yeah. And you know, the other thing too, I, I like I said, I think it's just deciding when to sw- or what to switch to quicker. It, the support line is definitely kind of hurting us a lot, but also not, you know, recognizing who the main threat is. And so far tonight, it's been Gabe. Gabe's been doing so much. I mean, we saw Sombra on Antarctica just absolutely dominating them. Then we see the Widow coming out and just popping off. So you got to, like, they, they tried to make a change going to that main, doing that double shield technique. But honestly, I think when it comes to those long sidelines, that's just too far of a rotation to do. Um, so probably going over to maybe a ball or Winston trying to like maybe dive onto him. It, there, there's yeah. probably other things they can do. And th- this is going to be good use for them to take and VOD say, Hey, you know, we were definitely going to shut down by one particular player and vigil. Cause to be honest with you, Quetzalcoatl, I mean, yeah, they look clean all night, but there really hasn't any, been anyone who's really put on the pressure like Gabe has. And now, I mean, we did see Shante, you know, Shante is finding the picks that he needs, but I would say as far as the value of presence being there is not as high as Gabe's. Yeah. I, I'm i curious to see uh, what map we end up going to here. Um, but I think that the dive, if there, if, if Quetzalcoatl continues to run more a poke style here, uh, with Sojourn, Hanzo, stuff like that. I, I'm curious to see how the coordination on Rio Grande Valley's dive is going to be. We haven't seen, we've seen bits and pieces of the dive, and they've gotten some picks, but it's it's mostly been overtime type scenarios. So it, it's, that could be a real sticking point if they do it. It's, it's going to depend on the coordination. Is the timing going to be right? when that Winston jumps up, when that ball slams, when the Genji dives in if they're running Genji, when the Tracer pulls up with the blinks. That, that's going to be a massive indicator of whether or not Rio Grande Valley is going to get success on these future maps if they decide to run the dive into that poke. But then again, we could, we could go to a Li Jong, let's say, and then you're forced into a brawl mirror on most maps gardens you can run winston comps um night market can kind of run ball fara not something that's seen all the time but it's doable so there's there's a lot of flex there's there's gonna be some maps where they're gonna be forced into playing a certain way but there's still maps left that they do have the flexibility where we can't see that dive if the other team's playing uh, poke, or vice versa, poke if into brawl. It's a, it's a trio at the end of the day in in the comp archetypes. So counter picking could be something in the future as well. And we are still waiting on a map pick here. We're going to take a short break here just so that way we don't keep rambling on. Once the map pick has come back, ladies and gentlemen, we will be back and we'll continue on with the uh, finals. Mm-hmm. All right, it looks like we finally have a map here. We're going to our first push map of the night on New Queen Street. 
So what do you think we're going to see here from what we've seen so far? Um, you know, I, I, I fancy, I fancy Arisa comps on Queen Street. I might be the only person, um, that's a, an Arisa enjoyer on this map, but I think based on what we've seen, we're probably going to see some sort of brawl come out here from Rio Grande. Um, possible we see that uh, Ramatra comp from Antarctic come back out here. Uh, Ramatra is still really strong. It's just a good overall tank. Um, so we could we could see that come back out with the uh, Sojourn uh, and the Sombra again. Would be really good picks. Um, and we are going to get a look here, and we do see that Ramatra comp come back out here for Quetzalcoatl. A little bit of change up on the DPS line. How do you feel about that, Giz? Um, you know, it might be it might be necessary. You no, know, I, I think if you're if something's broke, you need to fix it, right? And in the case for Ocelots right now, it seems like the DPS just hasn't been able to match the DPS coming out from Quetzalcoatl, so that might help. Plus, I think they're finally giving Gabe a little more respect than the, um, that's been deserved the whole night. So switching over to this uh, Genji might be able to help put the pressure on because I think that maybe they'll see that Widow coming out. Because, you know, Widow's been popular on this map here recently. But right now, we do see the Tracer coming out from Gabe. This is the third DPS we have seen come out from this player tonight, which is very awesome. And almost immediately one clip to Kiri, forcing the, the Suzu to come out. And it just looks like it's going to be an early fight push, finally for the Ocelot. It comes out forcing the Reaper Wraith to come out, and with that, the push is going in favor of Ocelot. But Shantae finding Patio Duck. Oh, what a bad... Oh my god, Shantae is just popping off in the back line. Finding three, and with that, this early push that we thought Ocelot was finally going to get is just going to be taken out by a castle. Nice, and we see we see the May swap here uh, for Rio Grande. May is really good on Queen Street. The uh, pathways can get kind of narrow in that midsection. Uh, good placements for walls you can stall from this high ground with wall and ice block as well. Um, so we're we're seeing we're seeing a comp here that for for Rio Grande that really wants to lock down a point, uh, an area of the map with that Reaper, with that May, with that Arissa. But the question is. How are they going to get in a position to run down this more mobile comp that is the Kiri Lucio Ramatra? And Jaster able to take out the Orisa. So now the tank advantage is going into the side of Quetzalcoatl, which has not been an unusual sight tonight while they're still getting picks off Gabe, finding the Baptiste. And with that, it looks like they're able to get this first objective point here on the push map. It's just going to be, you know, easy picking, trying to get these little stackers coming out, but they're going to be able to back up. Luckily, the Ocelots have the cooldowns to do so, but they might try to get greedy, see if they can punish some of these uh, chasing. Yeah. That Arisa is really low, and they do secure the kill there. Kitsune comes out. That Reaper's in the middle of the fight with the Death Blossom, does get two, and the Brig gets one too. That's a brilliant three picks here from Rio Grande. Can they can turn this into a fight win? It's just two supports up left. I don't know if they're going to get this fight win here. They kind of need it. Yeah, forcing the ROM to back out and use cooldowns and actually just pop the ult. So that's actually a good win fight for the Ocelot. Looking like they're finally got an advantage. That was a great death boss of the gun for JCCK. But is it going to be enough? I mean, they do have the old advantage coming here in this next fight, having three, pretty much four ults, so that Brigida's uh, rally should be coming up mid-fight. Here we go, early Arisa ult, the wall comes out, stopping them from running, forcing the beat drop and the blizzard also coming out. They're not able to find anybody, Gabe's able to get one, but finally Ocelot's looking like they're ready to play tonight, getting the team wipe here once Gabe finally does go down, and they're able to push this bot. And it should be just enough to get them around the corner. Maybe not quite enough to get that first objective, but it'll be closer than they were initially going to be. But it did cost them three great holes. Yeah, that was an expensive fight on, on both sides. You know, using that Orisa, that Reaper on the previous fight, not built back up yet. That Blizzard comes out, Kitsune on both sides. Uh, the beat comes out. So there's not a lot of ults here. It's really going to determine who gets more value, either this Brig ult or this High Noon slash Sojourn combo. 
And right now, it looks like the rally was not enough to keep the horse up in this battle. The high man was not able to find any true value other than separating the team. But Gabe just popping off with this railgun. Soldier and just in her home street, damaging everything around her, keeping her citizens safe. Yeah, so conceptually, I kind of I kind of like what's going on here for Rio Grande. Their comp, as I kind of said earlier, really wants to lock down a specific point, and and with push, your the objective's moving, so you can kind of anchor on this objective and make that as a death blow. They have to contest you at some point to stop the push, um, but. Like retaking in positions like this can be very difficult, and we're gonna see more ults pop here for Quasquato. Oh, Quasquato! After losing Ter Cassie, decided to pop both the rush and the overdrive, but it, all it took was one Death Blossom here to take down that fight. So two ults just dropped like that, and uh, no advantage was gained from it. it. That was a very bad decision coming out from Quasquato, which is not what we've seen at all tonight. So maybe they're finally. You know, starting to slow down, or finally maybe it's the ocelots who are picking up the pace. I, I I like the I like the economy on this. You you're having you're having your own Kitsune for Rio Grande Valley. You have that Blizzard as well, which was a really great tool previously. Let's see what happens here. The annihilation might get popped. The Blizzard comes out slowing down this fight from the uh, Kitsune rush that was able to find the break. But Shante able to find three, and yes, the annihilation does come out an unnecessary old as far as when it came to trying to get the picks, but I think it was just to help keep James alive in that fight, but honestly, I don't think it was it was worth it. Yeah, I mean, we're charging the beat up here. That's automatically going to be used uh, when that Orisa ult comes out from Rio Grande, so that's just a, an ultimate trade. And other than that, not much on the field. Might see a rally later, but I don't think that's going to affect anything too much here as uh, Rio Grande looks to pressure this point. Here it comes, the Orisa ult coming out, forcing the B drop and the Suzu as well. That means there is no protection left once this beat is over for the uh, um, for Quetzalcoatl. But James just fighting too much damage with the punches, man. He's rolling with them. Able yeah, to and a nice cleanup. So what I like about how Quetzalcoatl is playing here, they've adapted a little bit to to the Arista comp that's coming out, we are seeing wholesale swaps. So let's let's take some notes on this. Winston coming out, Cassidy coming out. I don't know how I feel about the Winston into Rom, but it could be good. But I think the ult advantage is heavily in favor of Quetzalcoatl now. Now the rally does come out to try to slow down the overclock coming from Soldier, but it's not enough because Shante is able to find up cleanup damage on Gabe's targets here. And with that is a team wipe, and it looks like Quetzalcoatl is going to be just a dead eye away from capturing all points here on New Clinton Street. They have the tools, they have that Annihilation really powerful in situations like this, right at the end of maps in overtime. This could be the fight to end this uh, end this map here. And immediately the Kasune Rush comes out with the Annihilation. Just the Diva trying to keep this objective alive, but it's not gonna be enough as Shante has the High Noon available. And with that, Quetzalcoatl will be taking the third map, oh, Death Blossom finally not able to get any value off of here. And it's just struggle buzz coming here from Ocelot trying to keep this map alive, but it might be in vain here if they're not able to find a pick on the support. Diva automatically getting d here, and it's going to be it, ladies and gentlemen. Finally, Quetzalcoatl is going to end the reign of terror that has been the Queen Street. But no, it just keeps going. It's, it's like a 2CP map. I'm telling you right now, every map is a 2CP map because of how quick the spawns are. But finally, Quetzalcoatl does get the map, and that is going to be a 3-0 coming into our halftime in the favor of Quetzalcoatl. Yeah, pretty pretty commanding. Less so than the previous maps. Rio Grande Valley pulling out that Arisa comp did some pretty good work uh, through the midsection of uh, of the map here, but uh, Quadzacodal made the adaptions. They resisted the uh, the retakes, saved their resources a little bit longer, and of course they do have shorter cooldowns on their on their resources with that Suzu only being around eight seconds. So it. it the the they manage their resources really well whenever uh Rio Grande Valley tried to push in with that Reaper ult, with that Arisa ult, you know, always saving the beat for the Arisa ult. Uh 
pretty key in making sure that every time Rio Grande Valley had an ultimate, they had a response either in amp speeding away, kiting back a little bit, or popping a counter ult. Pretty uh, intelligent play coming out from Quetzalcoatl, but Rio Grande Valley, we, we, it's, it's trending upwards for them. It's trending upwards. Well, ladies and gentlemen, like I did mention, that was our last map right before halftime. We will come back and we'll see if Quetzalcoatl will just take it away or if Ocelots will have what it takes to get that reverse sweep. See you soon.
Yeah. So welcome back, everyone. Just a quick recap here. We are currently standing at uh, a 3-0 in the favor of IP Quetzalcoatl. This is a best of seven. So we will be moving into potential, what could potentially be last map here. Um, Rio Grande Valley does have to take um, this last map or potentially last map to uh, force this series going forward. And they will have to win every map successively, which uh, should be a hybrid control and then another push. Um, so going going in, just quick recap, we've seen Gabe really pop off for Quetzalcoatl on that Sombra pick, on that Sojourn pick. Um, it's been really commanding for them. But in that Queen Street, we did see a little bit of a resurgence here for Rio Grande Valley. Uh, big death blossoms from JCCK. Um, good Arisa play from Trace. Uh, kind of commanding space on that cart um, with the Arisa ults. Um, so it's going to be, it, it can still be a very close series. They can still force this here. Um, and just a reminder of our options that they can pick from for hybrid. We've got Midtown, Kings Row, and uh, of course, Rio de Janeiro. Um, so, because let's say we're going to Rio here. What do you want to see? What do you think Slots needs to focus on to force map five, map six, map seven? I think they're going to have to run some kind of dive comp position, um, try to really force some pressure onto the DPS for Quetzalcoatl. I think, honestly, when it comes to Paricio, uh, Rio de Janeiro, you can get away with a far comp because of all the high ground and natural cover. Even though we've seen Gabe and Shante just absolutely blitz them with aim, like I said, there's enough natural color. So they got to play that natural cover. They got to make the rotations good and they got to communicate. They got to do exactly what Quetzalcoatl has been doing to all night, which is take their time, set up the pick, and then go on the target. Um, but we are seeing them come over to my favorite map, King's Row. <laughs> Yes, they just a do little pick inside Kings joke. Row. Just just a little inside joke for all of y'all. Casters, our favorite map is Kings Row because we definitely don't see it every game. Um, every game. Every game. Yeah, because it's such a great map, right? Um. So with that being said, I think we will see probably a Reinhardt come out. Now you could see a, a ball composition come out. You could probably see a ball fire comp. Uh, at least on the first point. After that, you might want to switch over. Uh, I'm definitely thinking we're probably going to see that Ramatra coming out from Quetzalcoatl just because James has been just absolutely brilliant with the cooldown management on such a difficult tank to play in that kind of style. Plus, the, all the natural cover makes it a little easier. Uh, we could see the Ocelots probably run that Arissa again. Arissa isn't terrible on here. And honestly, if I was really happy to see something come out, it would be maybe a Junker Queen here. Uh, Probably one of the few maps you can truly get away with playing JQ against even her counter picks, just because of all that, like I said, natural cover and the fact that you know you got tight lanes, which means she can get a little more uh, grace with Gracie when she throws them down, trying to get those pull picks or maybe even just some uh, stab damage as well. And to note here, we do have a swap in for Quetzalcoatl uh, Pleb. Taking a taking a sit out for this map, uh, we have Sauce Boss coming in, um, so we might see a Lucio coming out from that. Don't believe we've seen a Lucio from Pleb, so that could be shouting that we might see the Rhine Brawl come out from uh, Quetzalcoatl. So I, I'm I'm curious. I I, I kind of want Rio Grande Valley to pull this map win here get a little bit of a better series going on I, I think they have they got some momentum back on queen street and the it, it, it could be very possible uh that they can continue that forward and we are it looks like we are seeing the ryan duel going to be coming out here the difference will be will be the reaper genji versus the may cassidy and I mean, I, personally speaking, I think the May Cassidy is probably just going to be a little bit stronger because you don't really have any uh, dive target, or I want to say dive targets. You don't have any really good help on the dive besides uh, Patio Duck with the Lucio, and it really needs to be with the Reinhardt. Oh, no, never mind. Now we see the Echo, and okay, they're swapping around here. I guess uh, mm. Sadafu was. 
feeling better on the Genji here. But it, it's going to be interesting to see. But you know what, ladies and gentlemen? This is this is Ocelot's last chance. If they do lose this map, they will lose the Grand Finals here. So they really had to put all their heart and soul into this fight. And here we go. The fight starts up. No Maywall raised up yet. There he goes. Cutting off the Reinhardt. He's trying to split around, but uh, Sato doing a very dangerous dash through and does get punished for it along with the rest of his team here. And it looks like Hesekwala is going to start off strong like they have been all night in King's Row. Yeah, so I, the main difference uh, in this fight is Takiri is going to be a lot... You want to play a lot faster pace with Takiri. The, 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 slow, the, the heals are kind of low compared to Bap, so you want to get the fight over with fast, and we're going right into it here. Suzu already be forced up. A big pin, but doesn't do enough damage. Shante finding some Lucio with that Manetigrade, and looks like they're just going to be able to walk over here thanks to this May, and the pin comes out. Trying to stagger out Jick just enough to make this fight worth it. And uh-oh, James uh, might, might, might be a little taunting typing there. Mm. Yeah, I think there's a, there's a little bit of mis mismatch. I, I don't think that Genji, if you want to play fast with a, with a comp like this, you want to front load all your damage. So you want to be looking at picks like Junkrat, picks like Reaper, um, which... Uh, is coming out here, but look at the split up from the back line uh, of Quatsapoto, really keeping that distance. Maywell does get the Ryan, but the Suzu is able to slow him down. Blizzard is able to come out, and it looks like Gabe is able to find two nice clean headshots there with that. And with that, this fight is already looking so good. All the staggering picks. James, once again, just standing still after getting this. Mm, James, you're, uh, you okay, buddy? You, you make me worried here. <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 been good eco so far from Quetzalcoatl, only investing that high noon and that blizzard. You have this shatter this fight, both Ryans have shatter, so we're really looking on Trace to, to put the diff on here. Um, and oh that's a big pick. That's a big opening pick. Oh. Close out this fight right away. And Shante just find the bad seats that's trying to jump over the May wall. It's just staggering and they are gonna touch the spawn doors, ladies and gentlemen. We've seen it! The spawn doors have been touched by Quetzalcoatl! Yeah, it, it, it's tough now playing this May um, in this brawl because you don't have Lucio on the side of Rio Grande. So avoiding these getting split by these May walls is going to be very difficult. Uh, I want to see them use this Kitsune to kind of take space uh, from, through this uh, statue side. But this Ambatrix is going to punish that rotation right here. And the late Kasune, oh, it was just too late. That early window probably should have been enough to say, oh, and a shatter. James is just leaving no man behind. Just taking them through the mud and dragging them through the dirt. And There's that standing. J Queen you were talking about. Hey, oh, oh, they're going to get the punish on the May? No, not quite because of the ice block, but they were so close. But here we go. The JQ can be good because you can, you know, capture the Reinhardt and kind of force away. Plus, since the wall comes out. I think you have a little better sustainability considering you have the shout available as long as it's all in the mount. It looks like Shantae's positioning for this high noon on high ground here could be really good value. The reaper roll comes out big reaper roll from JCTK. It's traded with the high noon though. Yeah. It's gonna be difficult. And the major wall coming out blocking the mortar. The mortar able to bear. Oh, just couldn't get it over the wall. Just doesn't know quite the amount of angle to take to get that nice little jump off with that change rework a couple seasons ago. And with that, we're coming down to a last desperate fight for the Ocelots. They need this. They have to get this point. They have to at least get a tick to even have a chance here. But it doesn't look like they're going to be able to because the wall is able to oh shut no. down. And oh, unlucky for the Ocelots. They were not able to touch it. Game just destroying the team with these walls. I know a certain former president who had been very impressed with this. <laughs> the the threat of this blizzard was really powerful uh, for Quetzalcoatl on that last fight. I mean, you're walk you're either way you're walking in uh, into this blizzard, which is not a, the position you want to be in. You want to have a little bit more time to kind of posture your position to give yourself a good escape route and make sure you're not in a position where you can get walled behind you. Um, but it's that last fight. You you gotta just you gotta just go, um, and the ult rotation is uh, not great uh, for Rio Grande Valley. And we're gonna see a 
mix-ups on both sides. JQ for Quetzalcoatl and Doomfist for Rio Grande Valley. I am a Doomfist enjoyer. I am happy right now. Yeah, I, I agree. We get to finally see. I mean, this is great. We've we got to see some variety on King's Row, which for those who have been part of the Overwatch community for a while, just known the standard brawl was always the you know go to. But hey, at least Ocelot decide they're going to go down with a little style here, a little flair. But they got to be careful because Gabe is back on that widow, and we already saw how devastating it was. And we finally get to see some more Joker Queen. It looks like season. The first season of Overwatch 2 has finally come back to haunt me. Hmm. This is going to be really curious because Rio Grande is going to have to position really well here with their backline to make sure they don't get run over by the double speed boost of the Junker Queen and the Lucio here. And that's already a lot of resources gone. Wow. Yeah, I think with that, it's going to be a night, folks. Uh, Trace looks like he just kind of wanted to try to see if he can get that early pick. Probably forgot that Doomfist doesn't quite have the uh, killing capability that he had back in Overwatch 1. And, and with that, that, is that, going to be it. Good series. Quick, quick 4 0. Quick 4 0 for IP Quetzalcoatl. They are bringing the. The bag back for uh, Cruiser Sports, uh, great charity. Uh, it's gonna be uh, really, uh, really great for that for that cause. Yeah, and ladies and gentlemen, just a reminder as to what that cause is for. Let me get back to the notes here because it's been a minute. <sighs> Their mission is to enhance the quality of life for individuals with physical disabilities through sports and recreational activities. Uh, boasting well over 125 members, the organization is 100% volunteer driven and is one of the most recognized brands in the uh, ADAPT sports community. All funds raised are put towards the program offered at the expenses specialized in equipment needed for persons with disabilities to participate in various sports. So just remember, if you want to go help out this cause even more after this tournament, you can go to cruisers slash sports.com and with that ladies and gentlemen it is finally time to put a curtain onto our very first kg tournament i have been your play-by-play -play tonight gizmo charmander along with my co-host and color caster mr box and our amazing director and producer tonight storm we hope you all have a great and wonderful year. We look forward to seeing you again. Yep.